slather it on. Today, we're going to be talking about THC and CBD topicals, what they're good for, how they're made, all about it. Okay, today we're going to talk all about THC and even some CBD topicals, even though I think we're all more excited about THC topicals in general. I think we should just start with, can you get high from a THC topical? No. <laughs> all things being equal, no. Yeah, okay. I have had one patient tell me that they got... Okay, I'm, I'm going to also throw in, I'm going to throw in one caveat to this, right? If you're using it as like a lube or something like this for sexual health and or some of those things. Okay, you, different that's epithelial a, that's a different, that's absorption. That's different, yeah. We're talking like right here on my elbow, right? Like, yeah, we're I'm not, not, not going to get lit off my elbow. So. <laughs> right. Okay, so how are they made, Blake? How, what's the difference between, like, can I eat it and get high? Oh, that's a horrible idea. I mean, theoretically, yes, but you'd have a lot of diarrhea. I mean, oh, so you'd be sending it out. It'd be messed up. That's so, a bad idea. But, but how are they made? Are they made so that they absorb in the skin better? Yeah, so, so there's kind of different ways to think about this. You have typically lotions and balms. So lotions typically are more traditional, like your Luberderm or something like this. And, and they're designed to move across, you know, your skin. Um, and, I, and I just want to throw this out there real quickly. A lot of doctors have hesitancy for anything that's a topical because they don't believe that you can get an effect. But that's because most medications have to go through your skin, all the way to your bloodstream, all the way to your liver then back out from your liver after being metabolized back to the area that needs to be affected. And so obviously then, yeah, it becomes dubious. But keep in mind with cannabis and cannabinoids in general, I don't have to get to the blood and then liver metabolism. I literally just have to get to a nerve, a synapse, right? And that's where I start to get effect from it. And so we're talking just really small amounts, eighth of a millimeter. So, so when we start thinking about like that, topicals become very effective. So now a lotion will tend to go in much easier and quicker than, say, a balm. A balm is typically more greasy, but also your duration is different because of your absorption. So in a lotion, you'll get four to six hours of relief. A balm typically is about six to eight hours, but that's also greasier. Kylie, what types of conditions do you see people using these balms and lotions and these types of products for? Oh, arthritis pain. My arthritis patients love lotions and balms. They never leave without one. They use them all the time. They love it. Those are that's like my top patient that comes in mm -hmm. for a topical. And you feel like they're they're really just safe products. Uh, oh, I mean, absolutely. I think we all we're all yeah. like talking about this a little bit easier because it's just not going to get you it's high. It's not going to get you it's... high. You're not going to feel weird. You're going to just rub it on and it's going to work and you're going to love it. What do you find that, you know, arthritis pain in the hands and feet mostly? Hands and feet. Um, I do have patients that come in with joint pain in their elbows and shoulders. I don't see as much in like the hip area, mm -hmm. people using that. But anywhere where it's a little, it feels like closer to the surface of the skin. Yeah. Tendinitis, mm -hmm. tenors, tennis elbow. Yep keyboard, you know, when you're, you get all oh, those yeah. repetitive motion, carpal tunnel, thing, carpal tunnel yeah. uh, topicals are awesome for all of those. We discuss topicals with almost all new patients, especially, right? Patients that are totally naive to any THC because we want people to in, be introduced to a method that will help them feel better, right? Reduce those symptoms like their arthritis or even migraine headaches where they're put it behind their neck. And it's surprisingly effective and it almost, not trying to get people to use THC, but it works so well. It works really well. I, I mean, tend to have yeah. people do the balms versus the lotions, though, because I feel like they last a little longer. They do last what, longer. How long of a duration is, is a topical going to last? Yeah, so again, lotions, so the way that you make a lotion versus a balm is the lotion is going to have lots of ingredients in there that help with absorption of moving through the, the initial layers because you're wanting it to absorb and absorb quickly. And so that's kind of the whole point. You're moisturizing as well as getting into the area that's affected. And so, but they only last typically four to six hours, sometimes a little bit less depending on how quickly it absorbs. Um, and your surface area that you're covering. So if you spread it out real thin, it won't last as long as if you leave it 
conglomerated onto the skin. Balms typically are greasier and they don't absorb as quickly, but it's this longer duration over the larger affected area. And those can last six to eight hours. And so, and then a balms typically just have, if you think about it in terms of like ingredients, one's going to have more like lanolin and one will be more of a consistency like um, a bag balm or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. and, whereas, yeah, yeah. and so, um, and then the lotions are typically go to anywhere in your health and beauty section. I mean, they all are basically the same general ingredients with little minor tweaks to fragrant, fragrance and things like that. Is there ever a time when you want patients to only use like high CBD topicals versus adding a little THC? I generally like to always have a little bit of THC in there, even if it's just a little bit. They seem to work better when there's a little bit in there. Yeah, we've talked a lot about this before, how how the THC, I mean, the THC and the CBD work really well together. Mm -hmm. These products tend to be on the very far end of the safety spectrum, yeah. right? So to speak most with safe. patients, right, as the most safe. And so, frankly, it's hard for me to describe these as a federally illegal right. product. So when you think about CBD versus THC, it's what are we trying to accomplish by putting on the topical? So to your point, and I really like this, like if you have arthritic fingers, this is not something where you're going to have to sort of put it on, wait and see. Like it's pretty much a guarantee. Like there's a really high success rate. We can pretty much guarantee if you have arthritic fingers, we can unlock those fingers in a little bit. But am I trying to decrease inflammation? Am I just trying to get pain relief? In pain relief, THC, higher levels of THC are more effective because as you absorb them, you're masking actually the pain signals. If you're trying to lower inflammation, you're going to want some molecules like CBD as well as CBG and some of those other types of cannabinoids we've talked about because those will actually lower the inflammation around the joints. Um, and so... I agree with both of you in that you need a little bit of THC. And when we talk about entourage, what are we really talking about? We're talking about basically molecules that are working in tandem together to get a greater effect, a synergistic effect. Um, when you look at THC, it has higher cellular um, uptake than CBD by itself. But you seem to see that with a little THC, your CBD is more effective. Now, does that mean you have to have tons and tons of THC? Well, you're not using it to get high and psychoactive anyway. So like putting 10 million milligrams of THC into a balm or a lotion is quite frankly a waste of THC. But without any THC, you're not going to have the same absorption rates. And so, you know, even hemp compliant 0.3 is much more recommended than like a topical made with an isolate. That, that's just not going to do what you need it to do. So for patients who are brand new to cannabis, have never tried anything and are scared, especially of getting high or any of that psychoactivity, THC topicals and balms and salves can be a good introduction into THC medicine and cannabis medicine and understanding, just gaining that understanding of how they work, what they're going to do for you and, and just making it another option of and, medication. And I would quite frankly argue that if you have localized pain, you should always be using a topical in addition to what other forms are yes. recommended by your doctor and your pharmacist. I love topicals. You can put, you can put uh, them yeah, for anything. You put them on anything and, and you, if you like in the morning, so I have some lower back, you know, issues um, from being rowdy when I was younger. Um, and so I sometimes have trouble moving in the morning. Like, it, like even even get out of bed, like I have a lot of pain. And so literally one of my topicals that I use within 30 seconds, I can move. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time I can move and get out of bed and I, it doesn't mean I'm ready to do cartwheels or, you know, something like that. But like, sometimes I literally can get through my day because I use a topical. This is a little different than transdermal. Yes. Topicals yes. and transdermals. I want to make a clarification. We're not talking about transdermal delivery. We're only talking about topicals. Transdermal, we'll do another video about that delivery method, but that is specifically indicated to get through the skin and into the blood, um, and that's just different. Today, I'm glad that we've talked about topicals. I think it's a good introduction, like I've said, to THC medicine, that entourage effect. Um, if you have a favorite topical, make sure that you're putting it in the comments, and if you if you have any questions about topicals and how they work, comment below and we'll be sure to answer those.
Let's talk a little bit about specific conditions that might benefit or that you might find somebody using topicals for. So um, muscle pain is a great one. We had talked about nerve pain, but I think that one's a little harder to treat with mm -hmm. a topical. I have some patients that have had success with it, but it depends on where is the nerve. Mm -hmm. Like, like if where you is have that neuropathy nerve in your feet and you put it on your feet. It's probably going to work a little better. If you had sciatica or something, it's not, not going to work as well. Sure. So things migraine like that. Headaches migraine is headaches. One. You mentioned putting it on the back of your neck. That's a great thing to try out. I have had some patients. They rub it, you know, across uh -huh. their forehead and all the way down. Meridian um, spots, things mm -hmm. like that, right? So anything that's more surface level. Mm -hmm. Let's just touch on one of the additives that you might find in some of the topicals. DMSO. It's an additive that. I want you to explain a little bit about, because it can have some beneficial properties, but it's a little controversial. Dimethyl sulfoxide, yeah. So um, it found prominence in the 70s, and what people found, um, it was developed as basically an additive for helping people to do uh, get things across the blood-brain barrier. It helped uh, absorption through skin. And, and so people at, at the time, you could buy it in health and beauty stores. I think you can still get it in some health and beauty stores. You could take like an Advil. You could grind it up in a mortar or pestle, add a little DMSO, and rub it directly into your joint. And what the compound does is it allows you to pull that medicine directly through your skin as if your skin is not there. And so, theoretically, that sounds awesome. But if you have dirt on your skin the, in laboratories where there's transmutogenic DNA, you will bring all of that through your skin. And so, DMSO typically has fallen out of favor beyond formulation in, in pharmaceutical companies because there are other health, Im health implications. Now, that doesn't mean the DMSO itself will cause cancer, but if you have something, some environmental factor on your skin or in the lotion or something along those lines, you're taking that directly into your bloodstream. And so I, I find, and this I'm speaking personally, um, and having worked in pharmaceuticals for a long time, when we worked on topicals and th so forth in, in pharmaceuticals, we no longer put them in products for humans. So if you're gonna use a product with DMSO, consult your pharmacist and consult, consult your medical provider before to get a little more instructions on how to use those products. Today, we've learned a lot about THC products and what types of patients and conditions might benefit from using a THC topical. We learned the safety of them and how it's really hard to get any psych, if probably impossible, and for the most part, to get that psychoactivity. This is different than a transdermal delivery approach. If you have a comment or a question about topicals, or if you have a favorite topical that you've tried for a certain condition, we really wanna hear about those. Please put those in the comments below. Mm -hmm.